Hey guys, Nigel here, Nigel's Modelling Bench, and here we are on a bright and sunny Friday morning. This is a good Friday. So, um, yeah, I've just realised I filmed part 12 last night for you, and um, basically I said that what we'll be doing next is go on and get all this done. Well, I forgot about this. <laughs> we go to the wheels. So, what they're basically showing you here in the instructions is um, to assemble the wheels with the tyres and then put them in here and screw these hubs on and stuff. I'm going to actually do it slightly different than that. Now the reason being, when we come to build these wheels, we've got our axle shaft here and then we've got a washer, a lock washer and a screw with some thread lock on it and that gets screwed in there and then we glue on this outer cover C10. Well basically I want to do that now on the outside wheels and then when we paint them, weather them and wash them or highlight them and wash them, we'll be doing it as one assembly rather than gluing on that centre cap after we've painted and everything because we've got to paint the wheel obviously before we put the tyre on. So what my plan is here is to remove um, six, twelve of the wheels, okay, and have them off the sprue and then we'll fit the axle and the screws and washers and everything to them. And the other twelve we'll leave on the sprues, okay, so because basically the six on the outside here both sides that's 12 and then a six on the inside so what we'll do with these we'll just paint these on the sprue and then oh my god painting on the sprue is a big thing and um, we'll paint these on the sprue because the sprue connection points as we can see are here away from where the tire uh, underneath the tires so we can spray them on the sprue and then assemble them afterwards in fact what i could do is even what i might do is assemble the axles and the shafts onto them while they're still on the sprue and it's a great way for holding them for painting them weathering them washing them and everything instead of having to hold them individually so i think that's what we'll do and then we've got the center caps here going to go on okay so i think that's what we'll do so let me get all my stuff together and then we'll um we'll make this part doing the wheels Right, so what we obviously need here are our wheels, and we need 24 of them. We need 12 of the MA4 screws, which are going to be in here, in our A bin. And then we're going to need 12 of the washers. Well, actually, actually we're going to need six at the moment. So we're going to need six of the screws, six of the lost wash, lot washers, which are in there, and six of the um, plain washers, which are in there. And then we're also going to need six of these actually no we're not going to need 12 of these mu1 axles so um yeah we're going to need 12 of these aren't we not 24 sorry 12 screws 12 lock washers 12 flame washers and 12 axles okay now the axles are mu1 i've got them out of their bag and i've put them in the b box because we're not using any b parts here so first thing we need to do is get all those parts out so we will get our screws out here so we want MA4, and we can see here that there is MA4 on the instructions there, lovely. So we want 12 of those, That's what I use is a magnetic screwdriver and I can pick up more than one at a time then. We've got a nut there. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12. It's just 12 of them. Now we want 12 of these MA plain washers. It looks like it wants to pick up everything but the washers. Better off with the tweezers, I think. Three. Four. Five, six, a tiny screw in there. Careful not to lose that. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Should be twelve of those there. We'll soon find out. Now these here. There's five. Six. 
seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Look at that. There we go. Who said I wouldn't entertain him picking out washers? <laughs> right. We also need to drop a thread lock. Oh god, here we go. Threadlock City, here we come. So a piece of paper towel to keep it on. Just gonna check the nozzle's clear. I expect a gallon will come out. No, the nozzle's clear straight away, that's good. Here we are, look. Watch it. <laughs> Crazy stuff. Right. So we're gonna take an axle. We need the axles as well, don't we? Should have got that out. If anybody comments about how boring it is watching me getting stuff out of boxes, I just won't be happy. Not at all. Anyway, guys, I hope you're all keeping well and and um, you know not not getting down in the dumps too much about all this virus stuff. Um, and I hope you know you're sort of managing to keep yourselves entertained. This is what I'm trying to do here. So that's going to go in the back of there. It's one of our axles. And lucky that's a nice snug, oh, it won't stay in there. I thought it would be a nice snug fit and it might stay in there. So this is going to be fun. So we want the plane washer in there, like that. A lock washer in there, like that. And then I'm going to get a screw, like so. And dip it in the thread lock and put it in the hole which is easier said than done when the screw wants to lean over go on in you go there we go and then with our screwdriver we can put that in like that hold the wheel so as not to break it out the sprue and there we go we've got our axle attached and the wheel is still on the sprue so I'll do another one and I think then I'll do the others off camera because I don't think your boredom levels will stand me watching stand watching me do this 12 times. Oops, where did that go? There it is. It's one good thing about doing these videos. Sometimes parts just fly off. I was doing I can't remember I was doing a tank once and a part flew off over the bench that way. And I was able to go back, watch the video, slow it down to about 10%. And I watched it go over here and bounce back. It was fantastic. So I knew that instead of looking over there, I had to look over there. And I found it. And if I hadn't done the video, I probably would never have found that part. Okay, let's get some thread lock on there. What I've got over here is just a, a paper towel. Let's bring it over so you can see it. Paper towel with the thread lock on it. And obviously, when you, as soon as you look at the tube it oozes out so um just got a little dollop there and I'm just dipping the screw in so we can put that screw in there hold the wheel give the screw a good nip I'm just looking at making sure these edges are all good they may need a bit of a cleanup actually we may have to take them off the sprue to clean them up we'll see so <clears throat> I'm going to go on and get the rest of these done and then I come back because you really don't want to watch me put all them in deer. Okay, so I've got those done now. There's 12 of those wheels with the axles on, still on the sprue as you can see. I've looked around and the rims are okay. They're, they don't need any cleanup. I thought there might have been some flash on them, but they're, uh, they're absolutely fine. Remember these parts have been washed, so we don't need to worry about priming them and stuff. We can just put the um, Mr. Hobby aqueous paint straight on there. They're, it's a very tough wearing paint and it, strict, it sticks extremely well to plastic. So now we've got to fit these hubcaps. As you can see, I've got them off. I've got 12 of them there and I've cleaned them up. I've got rid of the sprue. There's only one sprue nub on each, which is nice. And then they've got two little lugs on the back of them. You can see there, one, two. And they're going to fit in those slots in the wheel like so. And unfortunately, they fit awful. Okay, very, very sloppy fit indeed. I assume they're the same on all the wheels. Yeah, so what we're going to have to do, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to get some of our Tamiya Extra Thin, I'm just using the ordinary, not the quick setting, and I'm going to put a pretty large dollop in here, and you should be able to see it capillary around. Now we're not going to worry about glue getting in the rim, that screw and everything, because none of that actually moves. So we're going to put that in there, get it to drop in, and then we can actually nudge it around to get it central 
so it looks good in the wheel. You've got to be careful of shadows here. If your light is to one side, it will make it look off center. So what I'm doing is holding it directly in front of my face and then I can see it because to me, stuff like this stands out like a sore thumb. Now you've got probably three to five minutes to move this around. That's why I put quite a large amount of glue in there. If you only put a tiny drop of glue in, if you go to move it after say 40 seconds or 50 seconds, you'll probably find it'll just come off. So you want a rather large dollop of glue in there, nice and, make it nice and wet, get it dripping wet if you want to, and then just drop that in into those grooves and then centralize it. All right, so again, you don't need to watch me do that 12 times. You can watch me do it once more if you want to. Nice drop of glue in there. Get our cap. We'll pick up another one because that one doesn't want to come. Drop it in there like so. Okay, and then you can nudge it around. You can still nudge this one. Still nudge that one. Let's see, you've got to be careful of the shadows. All right, so um, not the band, the shadows from your light. There's nothing wrong with the shadows. They were, they were quite good, actually, in their day. So um, I'll uh, go and do the others, and then I'll come back. All right, there we are then. <clears throat> so there's our um, eight wheels on there. Four wheels on there, all with their axles on, all with the centre caps on, all nicely centred up as far as I can tell. So what I'm going to do now is get these painted. Now you don't need to see that. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to paint all of these. I'm going to paint these around the outside rims. And then when we actually get them together on the bogies, there's a flash on there. You see there's some flash on the inside of that rim. Just cut that away there. Uh, what we'll do when we um, when we actually put these onto their bogies, I want to check that this. Sometimes you'll find, yeah, sure enough, the flash is on that one as well. What we'll do is we'll paint the um, the inside wheels. We'll put the caps on and we'll just give them a a coat of paint. Now I'm going to have to go around. Yeah, see, I've got to check the inside of these rims. I've been checking the outsides and it's the insides that have got flash on them. So I'm going to have to go around and check them. I may have to take some off the sprues. We shall see. Yeah, there's some there as well. Look. Right, so I'm going to have to go and clean these up now. All I'm doing to clean these up, I've got a very sharp blade. Don't try this with a blunt blade, you'll make a mess. And I'm just literally letting the blade do the cutting. I'm not putting any pressure on. I'm just letting the blade do the cutting. And it's just removing any edges that happen to be on there. Like so. we go just like that because there's quite a lot of flash on that one at the end of the day it's a tank the wheels would have got beaten up and I'm not sure how good a finish they would have had on them even when they were brand new so I don't think we need to worry about it too much but uh, you know we need to get it as good as we can there's no point in just letting it go if you like sending it off the end of production line when you've got no it's got something wrong with it it's crazy when it's something you can do about it and after all we've got all the time in the world so um just to show you again, this blade you can see it's, it's, it's got a, it's sharpened on both sides. So if it was like a chisel, you could hold it flat and it would cut. But basically, if you hold this blade flat on something, it doesn't cut. You need to tip it up to get the actual cutting edge to touch the, to touch the edge. So what I'm doing is I'm just tipping it up. I mean, this is something you can't teach anyone. This is something you've got to try and try and try until you get it right, and one day it'll just come. It's the same as I'll show you something else in a minute, like deburring plastic card. Something you can practice this on, actually. 
it's a great little skill to have in your arsenal because it just comes in so handy for things like this where you know if you get in there with a piece of sandpaper you're going to start removing detail off those bolts it's a lot easier if the parts off the sprue so if you are trying this for the first time you might want to try taking the part off the sprue just go around like that God, I'll do this 24 times so what I'll do is I'll do the rest of these in fact I'll finish this sprue and then I know I've done two of them and I'll do the other one off camera but if you've got a, a spares box with some spare wheels in it or something you could give it a go right um I'll come back to that in a minute Get a piece of plastic card. Okay, so let's get a piece of plastic card that's been snapped. Here we go. I don't know if I can show you this. This is like a piece of 10,000 plastic card. And if I can catch it in the light, you can see on that bottom edge there, it's raised. It's got a raised edge on it. Okay, now. Very difficult to sand because if you sand it it's likely to curl up or you're going to put a chamfer on it so if you want to actually deburr this if you hold the blade as i say if you hold the blade flat it won't cut you see what i mean because it's just it's flat to make it cut you need to tip it up and let the cutting edge do the work you see how it digs into my finger <clears throat> excuse me Sorry guys, I had a bit of a coughing fit there. So anyway, to, to make it cut, if we, we hold it flat, it does nothing. Okay, we'll get rid of that piece of plastic. So I'm holding the blade flat. If I slightly, what I'm doing is tipping it up. As I say I'm tipping it up, I'm doing, I'm basically doing this. I'm tipping the blade up. So if I have it tipped up too much, it won't go forward. It just digs in. So what I want to do is just lift the blade up. And then you can see what happens is as I lift it up, it deburs the plastic and it removes that edge from the bottom. You see now that it's gone? We've got the same on this side. We've got a burr on the bottom edge. So what I can do is come along with the blade, tip it up, and you can see there's the burr scraped off onto the blade. So you can practice this at home. And if you want to actually make another piece, what you do is you take this piece of plastic card, hold it down with a rule, couple of light passes I'll break it off and then what you'll see on here you will have on that bottom edge there will be a raised edge you can see it there see it okay so then you can come along with your knife tip the blade up tip the blade up then you can see it starts to cut it off there you are now obviously if you tip the blade up too much I'll show you what happens you will just start to tear up the plastic card if you don't have it tipped up enough you do nothing so what you want to do is just have the blade just tipped up enough just to scrape off that burr you can do this but what will happen is it'll curl up watch and I've got it dug in it's not doing it. generally if you do that it curls it up for some reason it's not curling it up but you can see also what it's doing it's scraping the hole surface there so it's easier to practice do it this way okay if you want to curl it up you take a rule and you pull it up under a rule and it makes it curl up like that if you want to curl up that end what you do is you grab this end and then you can make a full circle so like if Ozzy Trekkie is watching this you'll see Ozzy Trekkie is building HMS Hood in 200 scale in part 5 he makes the interior walls for the B turret base well, if you take your plastic card and roll it it just stays into a circle like that as you can see and you can do that with pretty much any thickness just find something thicker um, that's ten thou that's five thou so here we've got a piece of five thou card which would have been fine this would have been perfect for Aussie Trekkies HMS hood pull that up like that turn it around pull that up like that and there you go you've got your 
turret wall in one. So if you're watching that, Scott, there we go. There's a little tip for you. If you, if anybody's watching this and you're new to my channel, if you look back through my videos, you'll see I'm full of these little tips like this. So, um, oh, and if you want to flatten it out, just go the other way, like so, like so. There we go, and it's pretty much flattened out. All right, let's get some painting done. Okay, so here we are back again with the. Uh, with the painting all done so the wheels are all painted as you can see painted the fronts and the backs um, suspension units are all painted so you can see them they're all painted front and back so they're ready to go on obviously we're gonna have to do some painting around here because we'll have two screws in there so we want to make sure that they uh, they're all covered in green paint as well um, and as you know we've done the center caps on these forward face or outward facing wheels and then I've actually painted over the, the center caps for the inward facing wheels and then we'll give them a quick touch up after they've all gone together. I've also taken the advantage, well, I've taken the time to paint the main, main hull and to be honest, I've done this wrong. I would recommend anybody building one of these, paint the whole hull first. Um, I was trying to sort of, you know, not be clever, just trying to think of a different terminology. I was just trying to sort of basically paint the whole thing um, we'll paint all the other areas where it's going to be, you know, hidden, hidden by metal so that I don't end up with bits of grey primer showing through. But to be honest, I could have painted the whole hull and then painted all the bits that go on and then just given it all a, a quick coat of paint afterwards because getting in here and getting the right shades and everything and having the paint not all dry and it, it's a bit of a nightmare. Um, the fact that it's a military vehicle helps because it needs to be sort of slightly rough anyway. And we can see that I've sort of done both sides. I just mask these wheels off with a roller masking tape, and um, they're all they're all done. So so basically, all done. Went in from all the angles, made sure we got all the screw heads, and that's all done. Now on the bottom, I painted it green. Or on the underside, should I say? I painted it green, and I've had a play with some varnishes. Now I used the MRP. This shows you how good the lids are. This is the Super Clear Matte Varnish. And it wasn't really very matte at all. It was quite satiny, to be honest. In fact, it didn't really look any different than this. You can see there's a bit of a satin finish on the on the Mr. Hobby paint, which is how it's meant to be. That's how they make it. Um, but I want a dead flat, dull finish on this. So I thought I'd, underneath I'll use the underside to, to sort of experiment with some different paints. So tried that and then I went over it with this one. Now this is Alclad, you can see how old this is, 495, I mean that's probably about 10 of these days. But I've got some um, I've got some ceramic ball bearings in there. I use, where I used to work, we used to have a lot of machines with some ceramic ball bearings in them, bearing races. And what I used to do, the maintenance guys always used to give me the old ones they took out and I'd get the balls out of them. Because ceramic balls are great for putting in your paint because they won't corrode. Um, they won't tarnish the paint at all, they're ceramic, they're totally inert and... You just when you've finished you just use them again you know in something else so i don't know if you can see them in there it's very difficult to show you because obviously i can't hold it up to the camera but um they're sort of gray they're gray in color so yeah this all this all clad clear coat um i've had this for a few years now but it's given this it has given a matte finish um another very good matte varnish is this one ultra varnish matte or ultra matte varnish however you want to say it from AK the only trouble is it's very very weak you can literally I mean if, if I'd sprayed that on there it would be totally matte I can go like that and just rub it off you know it basically rub off like blue tack it's um it's not good at all so um then we've got our, of course we've got our Tamiya XF86 is it yeah, flat clear XF86, we could use that, but I find that's not that flat. So I might have a little experiment tomorrow with some XF86 with the, is it the X21, the, the flat agent? Yeah, X21, the flattened agent. I might try that, see what happens. Um, if any of you guys have got any tips about flats, I mean, I know about Tester's doll coat, but I can't get hold of that. Um, it, let me know what you think about different sort of flat mediums. Um, at the moment, I'm quite happy with this one because 
even though it's quite sort of it's it's quite rough i mean it's better now but earlier on when i rubbed it it sort of all turned white uh, we, we can see a kind of bit of a white powderiness here and i'm kind of wondering if i take a this is a 1000 grit if i take a 1000 grit sanding stick and sand over it does it kind of smooth it out and not lose the the flatness i mean that is this was only sprayed about six hours ago and I'm, when i just moved my hand then it still felt quite tacky but then i, I didn't put it on long after it was painted so it's had the paint and then the mr mr mrp and then this one so i guess it needs a bit longer to settle down but yeah, I'm kind of rubbing that there and it's kept its flatness, but it's lost its roughness. So I think this may be something I'm going to go with on this model because I want it to look kind of distressed and tattered and worn, but not, you know, not sort of so bad that it's, um, it's beat up or anything. I don't want to really weather it up like it's just come from Bastoid or something, you know, and just been, been through a building. Um, so let's see what happens but um, I'm quite happy with the way that's come out you can see that you can see where I've been spraying it that's because I use my airbrush which has a, um, a small it's only a 0 0.3 needle I think it's got a very small cup I really should use an airbrush I've got one but I don't get it out um, with, a, with a bigger needle and a bigger cup for doing these larger areas but I'm kind of saving it for car bodies when I get the inclination to do model cars I want to use it on them so um you know military stuff it doesn't really matter if it's blotchy and all it just doesn't matter at all so um in here is going to get covered in dust and dirt anyway so not to worry so uh, yeah there we go um happy with that i've managed to get some um green paint on there so just to tell you that what i'll do is uh, this is some cellulose thinners on a cotton bud it just happens to be next to me what i'll do is i will go over that with there you go dissolved it straight away if you're on metal say those thinners is always the way to go because it'll just get rid of everything or you can use the um and also down here that we've got some overspray in there we don't need to do this but you know why not let's have it looking tidy there we go that's that all gone wipe it over get in there again and there we go so that's the main hole done okay so as I say let me know in the comments um, because I've sort of pretty much caught up now this is part 13 this is Friday night late and this is going to be going out on Saturday so we're sort of pretty much caught out now so you're going to see this on Saturday and you'll have Sunday to comment so it won't be too late for me to uh, change my mind use something different or whatever but i see got bits of dirt in the paint there so um it's actually quite nice to do this big military stuff because you know there's a hair in the paint there i can see and i've just scratched it there you can see how hardy this paint is i'm rubbing that with my fingernail and it's not all scratching off it's just making it a, just making a glossy line in it and i can rub it with my finger and kind of almost get rid of it all the uh, yeah these mr hobby paints really are good really are good okay so there we go um let me know what you think guys in a minute i'll come back and we'll do some dry brushing on those wheels okay anyways as promised dry brushing on the wheels and this is basically an experiment now i'm doing these inner wheels because they're going to be painted again anyway so i just want to see how this works now in my last dry brushing section which i think was like part nine um, I talked about dry brushing, I used acrylics and I explained in that video that I normally would use enamels and I still got questions why don't you use enamels. Um, basically enamels are the best paint there are for dry brushing but there are only, well there are two downfalls. One is the smell, um, when you get enamels on your cloths and stuff and you chuck them in the bin come back to the room the next day the whole room stinks no matter how small amount of enamel thinners you've got on there it stinks. And the other thing is, um, if you're using oil washes or anything thinned with a um, odorless thinners or a enamel thinners or whatever, when you put the washes on, you tend to whitewash the, the dry brushing away. So 
if you're going to do your dry, brush, dry brushing first, it's best to use an acrylic. Now, I noticed on my video, some people commented, James Mower being one of them, fantastic modeler, go and look at some of his work. He actually commented that um, you could use Vallejo. So I don't actually have a colour equivalent to a, a British cockpit green, but I've got dock egg green and an American interior green. And I've mixed the two together to get this kind of shade. And you can see it's a fairly liquid kind of paint. And it's, you know, for, for dry brushing, it's almost the right colour. You know, we're, we're not being particularly fussy. So I've done a little experiment on here and it bloody well works. Um, so I'm going to show you on here. These are the wheels that have actually got the centre caps on. So these are the wheels that we're going to be using. So just going to make sure I've got, I've got too much on the brush. I'm just going to very lightly brush over here and you can see straight away. If you look back at my other video and watch how I'm struggling, you can see that this is so much easier. And I'm going to basically go around the rim and I just want to highlight every single edge and nut bolt, nut cranny. And you can see it looks quite garish, but then when we when we actually put a wash on, it all comes back. So what we're doing is just basically it's artistic license to make all this pop a bit. So clean the brush off. Sorry, you're probably out of shot there. And then once again, go in, start really, really lightly, just in case you've got too much paint on the brush. If you go banging in there and you end up with too much like that, you can just wipe it away. But you don't want to go banging in there and getting loads and loads of paint in there. All you're trying to do is highlight the details and that's exactly what we're doing here. We go around the wheel. Just wet my finger, wipe some of that away. And there we go. Okay, so there we are. And it's actually, uh, what is it? It's half past 12 on Friday night, Friday night, Saturday morning. So um, to all intents and purposes, it is right now, it is April the 11th, which is 50 years since the launch of Apollo 13. And I was there. I was there, stood on the water side, and I watched Apollo 13 go off. And then I have a lot to tell, which one day I will tell you. Now, I know a lot of you, or some of you, are keen. There's the bell just got a view of my clock, just go. So I mean, it's half past 12. Um, yeah, basically, um, a lot of you are dying for me to do that 196 scale Ravel Saturn V. And I said that I may. I've always said May, start it tomorrow or today, should I say, April the 11th to um, celebrate the launch, the 50 year anniversary of Apollo 13. However, having said that, it's not going to happen. And I'm very sorry. There are two reasons. One, I am getting a lot, a lot more than usual comments about starting builds and not finishing them and it's almost like hate mail even though I'm getting many subscribers I'm still getting this kind of hate mail about not finishing kits so before I pick anything else up I'm going to finish what I've currently got going on so what I've currently got going on is this the book not a book, the book, the Russian missile launcher, and the Land Rover. Oh, and I've also got the radio controlled Land Rover, the radio controlled Land Rover going on the on my other channel on the Land Rover channel. Now, I'll be honest with you, the amount of stuff I'm getting, I've, I've got my I've got my YouTube set up now. Just wipe that off my finger, get my excess off. I've got my YouTube set up now so that if somebody puts a negative comment on the channel, 
or anything that YouTube think is negative they seem to have themselves sorted now basically it doesn't show so you guys don't see it now I get a chance to um, filter it and then if I like it I can give it a tick and if I don't like it I can bin it and I'm getting more and more and more and I'm also getting I don't know if, I think everyone's getting this it's not just me there's a hell of a lot of bots out there you know you see all these um, comments like uh, great video mate great content brilliant you know and it goes up 20 seconds after you've loaded an hour and 20 minute video you know how can you possibly say that after 20 seconds you know the video's only been up for 20 seconds and you're saying great content brilliant video right so I don't quite know why they do it I don't know what they have to gain but um whatever and if you actually go and hit on their channel they have no content so uh, yeah a bit weird I don't, I don't know what it's all about I really don't know what it's all about but uh, yeah unfortunately modern society is becoming um, I don't know I don't know the right word to use but it seems that people that are out there just sort of trying to do something provide a bit of entertainment on YouTube or Facebook or whatever they're getting hammered by people that don't necessarily agree with what they're doing or whatever and you know it's no longer sort of I'll just switch off and I'll walk away or why are you doing it that way I would have done it this way or tell you what mate if you try this that works a lot better it's uh it's like yeah you don't know what you're talking about your shit um you did that wrong that's wrong you're wrong why are you doing that and um you know it's it's not upsetting but when you've spent you know an hour and a half filming a video over over two days and then an hour and a half uploading it and then waiting for it or editing and stuff and then waiting for all the the stuff to start working to um you know you get it uploaded then you have to upload it onto your computer and then you have to upload it onto youtube once you've waited for all that and then you get on to receive those comments you kind of think you know this isn't worth it it really isn't worth it and I am seriously considering I must be honest I am seriously considering just packing all this in because it's just not worth it it really isn't worth the hassle and the the, the complaining well not the complaining I'm complaining it's the um it's the hassle and the the kind of hate that you receive you kind of think you know why you, you, you some people can, I think can just ignore it but um you kind of sometimes take it personally and um you know when you get when you get so much of it you think like, what's the bloody point really you know what's the point it's like if you had a a next door neighbor that you're absolutely madly in love with it whether, whether in love with them whether it be a man or a woman and you absolutely keep on and keep on trying to just get them to go out with you just for a drink just for one day and every time you speak to them they punch you on the nose after a while you kind of think really is this really worth it nah just pack it in walk away so um that's seriously the way i'm thinking guys sorry but that is how i'm thinking so um anyway enough of the moaning there we go that's the dry brushing done we'll leave that to go off and then we're going to get the tires on these and get them on them um, whether that's going to be in this video or the next part I don't know so we'll see how it goes um, in fact what we'll do is just try on here let's just see we'll do it on the back we'll see how it works let's just try a bit of dry brushing on here Yeah, that looks cool. It's picking up on the edges of that spring. Let's when we put a wash in there, that spring will really pop. I'll just keep the brush going in the direction of the spring. You do the same on this side. Keep it subtle. The 
there's no point in me doing this down here because I've got to paint that anyway when the uh, when the screws are in. But yeah, that um, that kind of makes all that detail pop, doesn't it? What you want to do really is just pick up on all the edges, and it takes the whole tone of everything down. You can see there on those on that casting there, it just picks up on the edges, and it just takes just takes everything down, just just a bit of wear, a bit of wear and tear, and then you know once we put the. I don't really want to dry brush those screws and highlight them, do I? It just breaks it all down and just picks up on the edges and then when we put the wash on bang it all pops as you know from seeing the uh, return rollers but no this Viejo acrylic for dry brushing works really really well I must be honest thank you very much guys it was more than just James that told me it was there was a couple of people so really chuffed with that and that's um really highlighted all those corners and edges and stuff so um yeah, I think we'll call that a day for part 13 and I'm going to go on and I'll carry on and dry brush these suspension arms and then I'll um, I'll do one more for you on camera just so you can see and then we'll uh, and then we'll move on but um, whatever happens guys if I do decide to um, sort of kill the channel as it were then um, I will definitely finish this one The thing is, modelling is a hobby, and you're supposed to enjoy it. That's what it's there for. And if you go online and you sort of think, well, I'm going to enjoy posting videos for the people to watch, share the knowledge and stuff, then great. But when the bad comments start to outweigh the good from the haters, and I don't know why, I don't know what I've done to upset anyone. Um, Unless somebody on Facebook has started something and basically said, you know, hey, get on Nigel's modeling bench, you can really piss him off. I don't know, but um, if that is you, if that's what you've done, then well done, it worked. And all you've done is uh, you haven't pissed me off at all because all I'll lose out of this is about, like I say, about hundred pound a month from um, from YouTube, which probably works out about. 50 pence an hour if that um, probably 30 pence an hour and um, the few bits and pieces I get sent so that's not really the end of the world to lose that it's certainly not worth putting up with the shit that I'm getting so uh, there we go so there's that one dry brushed there's two of them you can see how much better that looks when I put it next to a standard one or one that's not been dry brushed you can see it kind of makes it just brings it out what you're trying to do is make it look like it's been used and stood in the sun so i'll carry on and dry brush the rest of them and then um, i'll see you back maybe tomorrow part 14. thanks for watching guys stay safe stay safe stay safe stay safe stay in and uh do what your government tells you bye for now